Cool, excited to be kicking off presentations tonight. My name is Alex Truby, and as Chris mentioned, my project is going to be looking at analyzing aerial snow cover trends in southern Chile. So before I hop into my presentation, just a little bit about myself. Prior to doing Galvanize, I was working as an engineer in the energy industry for about five years. I finished up a master's in water engineering uh, December of 19, and my goal in doing Galvanize is to approach water and environmental problems through the lens of data science. So with that, diving into my project scope, I collected satellite imagery for 10 different regions in southern Chile, all contained within that rectangle on the right side of your screen there. Uh, I'll then be processing the images to determine the aerial snow cover extent in each image, and then determine if that aerial extent of snow cover has shifted over time um, via time series analysis. One thing that's important to note here is that I'm not trying to quantify the volume of snowpack or precipitation within these images because they are only 2D images, uh, the scope will be limited to just looking at the aerial extent of the snow cover. A little bit about the workflow before I dive in too far, it'll involve the image processing, creating the data frame, weighting each image so that the snow cover within each image is better representative of the area analyzed as a whole, and then analyzing the data as a time series to determine if there's been a change in the aerial extent of snow cover over the years of 1984 to 2016, which is the time period that I'm covering in the project. So first up is image processing. I decided to implement a k-means clustering algorithm. K-means clustering is, is an unsupervised learning technique that essentially looks for groups within the data set that may or may not be visible to the human eye. So the goal of applying that to these satellite images, an example of which you can see down on the left side of your uh, screen there, is to basically extract or separate the portion of the image that represents snow from the rest of the image. So if you apply two clusters to your algorithm, you're dividing your data set into two groups. An example of that can be seen here in the middle picture. You can see that the yellow cluster, and that's kind of what I'll refer to it uh, here throughout, it is capturing snow cover, but it's also maybe picturing it or picking up some of the areas above treeline as well as some of the glacial moraines in the image, which isn't super useful to my project. So I added a third cluster and you can see it does a much better job of completely isolating the snow areas of the image from the remainder of the image. And then another thing to uh, note here on k-means clustering is that generally when you apply k-means clustering to a data set, you, you'd really only apply it once, you get your groups within the data set and you kind of move on with your analysis from there. Because I'm compiling this data into a time series for even further analysis, it was really important that the snow was always represented with the same cluster center for each image that I processed. And that was just a small tweak, but an important one that I had to make in the code in order to make this project viable. So again, looking at the data in more of a time series format, this represents the weighted aerial snow covers. Uh, each year is an average of the aerial snow extents across the 10 areas that I looked at with the purpose of trying to determine if there's been a change in the extent of aerial snow cover for these regions. Visually looking at this, I would at least say it kind of looks like there's been some sort of change in trend, maybe in the second half of the data set, but let's do some actual analysis to see if that assumption is true. So I implemented a change point detection method um, called binary segmentation, which is essentially scanning the data set to see if there's a point in time for which the means before and after that point are different than the means of the data set as a whole. And I found that, yes, there is a point for which that's true, and it looks like about 2004. However, this binary segmentation test doesn't tell you whether or not that change in mean, um, mean weighted aerial snow cover is a significant change. So I followed that up with a separate hypothesis test using looking at the means before and after that change point and found that I could not conclude that there was a significant difference between um, the means before and after 2004, which tells me that I can't confidently say that the snow cover for these areas is either increasing or decreasing consistently over time. So in summary, I applied k-means clustering to extract snow cover from over 300 images, found that there was indeed a shift in aerial snow extent um, occurring in about 2004 via that binary segmentation change point detection method I just covered. And then following that up with a separate hypothesis test, although there was a shift, it was not a significant shift. And that's likely due to the fact that we really were limited to 30 years of data, um, just because the satellite imagery prior to 1980s wasn't super great. So next steps, as a water engineer, I would really love to expand this program to account for the volume of snowpack and precipitation within each of the images that I analyzed for this. 
Um, that'll eventually translate to water runoff from the mountains, which is really important for both local communities as well as larger cities in terms of water resource planning, um, water usage, et cetera. So with that, I will take questions.